Uh, yeah, here's an update on our blacksmith shop build we got going here. It's uh, not a very big building. We'll do a walk around and kind of show you what the outside of it looks like right now. We got a couple things going here. We've got our forge coming out of the ground right here, as you can see, built out of stone. I don't know, in the video, you probably can't really see how out of level uh, the ground is where we're working is on the side of a pretty steep hill right here. So uh, the width of our building from point A to point B over here is 12 feet. And uh, the amount of out of level the side of the hill is here is around four feet over a 12 foot span. So that's a considerable distance. And uh, how we're dealing with that is we got a dry stack wall coming in here. We're a lot of backfill. We have like a little area around this way where we're trying to clear out to make sort of like a field yard sort of thing. Uh, there's tons of stones all through it, which is really inconvenient for having a yard, but is convenient for having material to build with. And so we've been picking up a lot of rocks out of the field over there, bringing them over here. Most of them are just little baseball softball size pieces. And, and on down. The bigger ones around here we save for uh, building our dry stack wall with and any small little pieces like gravel, we use those for backfill and you know, in our floor to level out our floor here. So uh, yeah, these bigger stones here we've got for our forge. Those come from out of the creek down there. They're uh, you know, way off the side of the hill down there, but uh, different kind of stone, but these are real good for building here and these are good for building here. So we kind of just sort and use material for what it's best suited for. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at our wall over here and you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so uh, here's our dry stack wall we got coming in here to deal with uh, the uh, side of the mountain, how steep it is right here. So uh, I'll step over here and you can kind of see you know, my waist, whatever, this wall is roughly around four feet, which is a pretty good height to, uh, <laughs> to build a, uh, a dry stack wall out of small stones like, like these. They're not very big, as you can see. And uh, like I say, it's all dry, dry stack. So uh, that's why we got it angling in here at a good angle. It makes it a lot stronger that way. And uh, if you notice here, I don't know if you can see in the video, this is like a tieback stone that gets back into the gravel. The gravel really gets a good bite on it, makes it a lot stronger. We've got quite a few of these tieback stones through there. They look small on the base, but some of them run back in there and get a good bite on the gravel. Gravel itself is pretty neat how it works. You know, they're all jagged pieces. And uh, this is stuff we've picked up out of the field right through here. Like the, the round river stones don't really work for backfill because well, they're round, so they never actually gain any bearing quality. They just keep slipping and slipping and slipping, and they push out. They don't really hold, but these jagged, like, wicked-shaped pieces like this actually bite and create amazing bearing, like, uh, road beds are all made out of gravel. And that is a pretty demanding situation, continuous vibration and incredible weight. So it uh, works really good for backfill, and it's free. It doesn't cost anything. And it's like two birds with one stone, because when we pick it up out of our yard and out of our field, gets it out there and allows the grass to grow a lot better. And uh, then we get to use it for this over here and it doesn't rot, never goes away. Awesome material. So uh, anyways, uh, yeah, this is a nice wall coming through here. And, and uh, we've got some other ones around that we've built over around our wood shop. We'll take a look at those later, but they seem to hold up pretty good. We're kind of stoked about that. A lot of the building that we do, like techniques we use are, are uh, you're just kind of picking up and using what's available here. The, 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 the forest here where we live is uh, not, very, not very big, and plus we're not just gonna go cut down any like awesome tree that's growing really healthy. That'd be ridiculous. But there are trees where ice storms had damaged the top and broke the tops out, or storms have blown them over, and, uh, or like power companies along right-of-ways and stuff have damaged them so bad you know, cutting the tops out. So uh, we'll harvest logs that way. And my brother has a mill that's not too far down the way. So all the wood we're milling at the mill, all the stones we're picking up out of the field, stones for the forge, we're building, uh, getting out of the creek down there, different different grade. They come in like slabs about this thick, and you know, bigger rocks, you can bust them up and it's much harder material, but easier to shape and to nap out, kind of like you would make a point or something, an arrowhead. But uh, right here, I don't know if I'm still in the shot here, but uh, this was a big unstable bluff, like pile of rocks naturally formed here. So we had to unstack a lot of that. We got some of our stones from that. 
busted that out of the way with a sledgehammer so we could get this wall to ride across there on a good foundation instead of wobbly rocks and stuff. And any of that material we busted up, we stacked it in categorized pile. The jagged piece is used for backfill. Anything good we can get a face on, we'll use it for, for building the forge. But uh, yeah, so this is an update on our blacksmith shop situation. Uh, half of our living we make from blacksmithing and uh, our old blacksmith shop was really just a hand crank forge and an anvil and a pile of hammers that we just sat out in the open and used. And uh, we'll go take a look at it here in a minute and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a pretty lame situation, hard to really get any work done. So this will be a, a major upgrade. So we're excited about that. Let's take a look at the old place. All right, this is a uh, a road that comes through here right in front of our uh, wood shop built this last year. That was a major upgrade. Before that we were working on the side of uh, just on the side of uh, on the hill just just like we're forging right now. <laughs> and, uh, so anyways we'll get to the black or the wood shop later. So yeah this is our this is why we're upgrading our our blacksmith shop because this is our old blacksmith shop. We have everything just sitting out here in the open and uh, getting rained on. We got like our used our empty coal bags covering up vice and anvil and, and blower and everything. And uh, it's pretty challenging to get anything done. I don't know if you can really see it. It's kind of dark there. There we go. And uh, so oftentimes we come up in our cooling tank there is a solid block of ice and all our coal is like solid frozen together. And uh, this, like I said earlier, this is a road that runs through here and, and well, it's not big, very big road. You wouldn't be able to drive a car on it very easily, but, but it's a tractor road that we pull logs up. That's what that pile of stuff over there is, just uh, scrap left over that we burn now to heat with, but uh, from carving bowls and, and just carving wood all summer. So we bring the tractor up here to bring logs to access the wood shop here. And uh, so, yeah, so we have to set our vice out here in the road and the anvil in the road. And then when we're done, try to get it out of the way so we can get back to carving wood, whatever. It's just a time consuming, awkward, not very efficient way to work. And anybody who knows anything about blacksmithing knows it's really hard to actually do any, any work outside where you can't, it's so bright outside you can't see a color of the metal. So, uh, so yeah, this is our old blacksmith shop. And there's our new one coming up right down there. Not a very big, structure. I'll take you down there and we'll take another look around the outside of it to get an idea of the dimensions and how it's built. All right. All right, so here is the actual shop itself and the little talk on how it's actually built and whatnot. So it has a 12-12 pitch on the roof, good and steep, so we have real high ceilings on the inside to uh, keep all the heat and everything way high above our heads and stuff so it's not holding the heat right down on our heads while we're working. When you work on a forge, for extended periods of time it does generate a lot of heat, especially in a building, and that can be incredibly uncomfortable over like the warm season. So uh, yeah, our building is 12 feet wide and 16 feet deep. Not very big, but it is a significant upgrade from where we were working. Like I said earlier, half our money that we, you know, half our living comes from blacksmithing and the other half comes from uh, woodworking. So we kind of take our money and kind of invest as we go to upgrade our situation here. So this will be a significant upgrade from working outside like you saw earlier. Uh, pretty simple roof. We got three spander trusses, this gable, and then the center and the back gable, that breaks the ridge down into two eight-foot links. And so, blah, blah, blah. Helps us get really high ceilings and pretty convenient way to build. Uh, let's walk back here and take a look at our forge, what we have going on. Couldn't really see good from that angle. Let's get a better look back here. You can see, yeah, the ceilings are really high up there and that will be really good. So the post, they just go straight into the ground and they are red cedar. Red cedar is good rot resistant wood. 
So that is, that's good. Everything else is framed out of oak. And this is our forge we have coming up. Now, these stones here we got out of the, the creek. It's a little bit of a drive in the tractor, you go get them out of there. And so they're a much different material than what we were using over here in our wall. Uh, pretty much same thing though, build the perimeter, backfill it up until we top out at the right height. And then we are going to use a little bit of fire brick, but everything else we're going to harvest here out of the creek for as low cost as possible. So anyways, uh, this is going to be a side blast forge, not a bottom blast like, like most forges are today. But anyways, yeah, that's what we got going on here. And uh, we're going to try to make some videos as we go and uh, keep everyone updated. So yeah, all right.